Here's what you're going to learn uh, in this training. We're going to teach you understanding enforcement, showing you exactly what enforcement looks like, where to check for it, how to stay away from it. Uh, same deal with uh, how to soundly assess your spill records, uh, your audits, your SSMP, looking at everything like that to make sure it complies. Uh, three, avoiding violations. That's something everybody wants to do. Um, so we're definitely going to be hitting on that and ending up with getting ready before the inspectors arrive. We also have another uh, video uh, that we recorded with some of the best collection system managers from around the state that we like to present as well at the end. So here's a question maybe just to keep in mind uh, during the, uh, the presentation here today. How are you tracking ongoing enforcement actions in your regional area? This is an important thing you want to do as a manager. Um, we're going to hit on this a little bit to keep you informed. The enforcement policy, the statewide enforcement policy that the Water Boards has uh, is fairly complex. Um, it's something that should be studied and we're definitely going to hit on it a little bit today. We're going to do more videos later on this, but you know, escalating enforcement is a key thing takeaway here to know. You want to be over on the left if you're going to deal with enforcement at all, not on the right, which are the more serious uh, um, things. And you know, enforcement is discretionary, so that's something to keep in mind, which really drives the point home to stay in compliance. This is a copy of a, a report I'm going to get into, and in, I have a couple of training modules that we developed here for this, uh, this session to talk about how you can go and look at the training modules to really get a handle on what the boards are doing, the remedies they're taking, to really help you further improve your own program to avoid enforcement. So here's the first training module on where to look. This is a four minute introduction on understanding enforcement, a higher level uh, uh, product that we hope you'll learn from here. Again, walking you through the administrative civil liability orders you can look at, super helpful. Let's jump into that now. One of the key things you need to know as a collection system supervisor or manager is what enforcement looks like so you can avoid it. Let's talk about enforcement for a minute and what to be aware of. I'm going to jump over to the California Integrated Water Quality System Project, CWICS, that we're all familiar with. And down here on the public reports, is a very helpful tool with a bunch of reports here to not only look for the ones about violations statewide, what's going on, um, other data here, um, the, the SSO uh, tool to search all the spills, but right here on enforcement is a very specific set of reports. In this report, I'm gonna run through and show you some best practices and tips here on how to get a handle on your region where you're located in the state to see what kind of enforcement actions have been taken for spills, for SSOs. And so looking at this uh, tool here, uh, scrolling down, leaving this to all, and then scrolling down here all the way to the bottom and looking for the features to select on under SSO, there are two reports you'll want to scroll down to here under SSO, which is going to be the SSO uh, large and SSO uh, small, municipal large and small uh, reports. So here you can see a quick snapshot of uh, all the spills that have been uh, had penalties. There's 78 in there, about $11 million. More importantly, you can drill down here and click on these and take a look at the actual uh, orders that are in here to get a better idea of what kind of information uh, the boards are looking for, what kind of information uh, was presented in the cases. For example, we'll just scroll over here to, uh, to the top uh, to search for the uh, uh, issuance date. That'll put them in order. Scroll down to the bottom, the last one here being Galt City here. Uh, click, click on that one and it'll tell you exactly in the order itself over here uh, what the information is in the order itself. Here, R5-2019-0520. Uh, so that's really helpful. You can go in here and actually get the PDF and uh, study it yourself to take a look at what the uh, settlement uh, agreement is, what the arguments were, more importantly near the bottom, how the statewide water quality enforcement policy was implemented. We're going to have future videos to go into some case studies with a lot more detail about the policy and how it's applied.
But here you can see uh, a quick snapshot here of how the uh, uh, penalty action was taken. And one of the most important areas you want to always look for here are the conduct factors, culpability, history of violations, cleaning up. Uh, what happened during this spill? And all the details are here. So I invite you to go and look at that later. Uh, again, this is a quick snapshot just to show you uh, how to be aware of enforcement in your region and how to get that information in CWIX. Taking a look at the San Francisco Bay uh, Regional Water Board, they have an enforcement page. All the regional boards do. You'll want to bookmark to stay aware of any kind of uh, enforcement actions that are going on. Uh, you can scroll over to their, their and also to their um, board decisions under uh, adopted orders to take a look to see uh, for yourself in the uh, uh, particular names of any type of order numbers you're familiar with or uh, discharge your names it will come right up here uh, in this box here a great search engine to again pull up orders to keep you apprised and aware of what's going on in your region is one of the best practices recommended another great website you want to stay informed about for enforcement actually nationwide but uh, you know drilling down in california as well is the uh, regional association information network so that's when you want to bookmark it's got the Environmental Enforcement Association's uh, products in there, and they publish a lot of the enforcement. Again, you want to learn about what enforcement looks like to help you avoid it. Um, so I'll scroll through a couple here. Uh, these are, you know, no surprise. I'm sure a lot of you know about them. Galt, you know, six-figure settlement here. Um, City of Morgan Hill. The question you want to ask yourself on any of these when you're reviewing them, we're going to teach you this more, is what could have and should have been done to avoid enforcement and negative public attention with these. So, and that's what the boards really grapple with. Uh, in many cases, not only the facts and circumstances are considered, but a lot more in reviewing your own program, what you can do up front to avoid these things from happening. So let's jump into that next module. Uh, it's about a three minute video on understanding enforcement. We're gonna dive a little bit into the Morgan Hill um, penalty case, and it'll teach you more tips again on understanding enforcement. Um, to help you, you know, review it, have some key takeaways, again, to stay informed and more competent and better equipped. Let's take a look. Another one of the keys of understanding enforcement is to take a look at the penalty actions that have been done. Have you ever looked at them? If not, I'm going to show you in this next segment how you do that. In this module, we'll take a little bit deeper dive into what uh, the factors were, information was for the city of Morgan Hills sewer spill fine, $433,000 for four spills in the surface waters here. Um, this is shown here in the uh, city of Morgan Hills, uh, this release on rain. Uh, jumping over to the uh, regional board website, you want to go to their central uh, coast regional web board's website, pretty much any regional board, you want to go to their enforcement pages. So I'm going to go to their programs, come down here to enforcement. They've got a really nice summary they do here for uh, each quarter. And this one occurred here in the first quarter of 2020. Scrolling down, showing the City of Morgan Hills uh, action here that was uh, public and noticed. And using the uh, Administrative Civil Liability Report shown earlier, uh, you can go ahead and get the actual order. This is super helpful, uh, again, to really understand the uh, the factors, the extent of circumstances, all the things considered uh, by the board, all the things said uh, by the city of Morgan Hill for these sewage spills, these four, and just highlighting really quickly the uh, conduct factors here. The culpability starting with here shows you what was considered, all the factors for the different spills, um, et cetera, et cetera. This is very helpful to know again what what happened before. Uh, was there SSMP used or factored in? Uh, was it cleaned up? Uh, again, the history of the violations for the system. These are all things that are going to get considered for any penalty action. So by reviewing these, you're really going to keep yourself aware and informed and give yourself the tools you need to really be uh, on top of things. And uh, for your own system, take a look at what you can do and be ready to go so that uh, this doesn't happen. If it does happen, you're well equipped yourself to dive into the, uh, the factors here and know what you're getting into. Another question for supervisors and managers, what methods are you currently using to check your own SSMP and your SSMP audits, your spill reports, your own compliance, and the effectiveness of your program? 
how do you know if you're in compliance? Do you know what level you're at? Are you way above it? Are you just there? Are you way below it? Again, uh, we're going to help you with that. Let's take a look at this next module and how to edit, audit your SSMP. This is by no means a complete way to do it. It gives you some tricks, okay, how to get started in auditing yourself, uh, including a tour of a brand new uh, flow list that we developed our company to go through the major elements to help guide you in this process. Let's take a look. One of the things you'll want to do as a collection system supervisor or manager is get a handle on where your level of compliance is. Are you way above compliance? Are you way below compliance? Are you satisfied with your level of compliance? One of the best tools to do that has been around for a long time, the pre-inspection questionnaire. I'm going to walk you through how to use that so that you can evaluate your own level of compliance. The first thing you'll want to do is head over to the SSO library here, uh, which is located on the SSO reduction website on the right side here. And we're going to scroll down to the pre-inspection documentation. There are two links here, one to the statewide pre-inspection questionnaire and one to the one developed by the San Francisco Bay Regional Board about all the items that they check during their audits before and after more or less their audits that they do in the, in the Bay Area. The more complete one here uh, has all the elements you'll need to do your own gap analysis, both of your SSMP and your SSMP audit, if you want to do that one yourself as well. And so, you know, everything you can imagine here from uh, evaluating your sewer asset compliance, financial information, capital improvement, O&M, is included in this document. It's a very lengthy document in terms of pages but most of the questions are Q&A, so allow you to really step through them pretty quickly to uh, complete your work. So taking a deeper dive into how you would do your questionnaire audit of your SSMP, your SSMP audit, our company came up with this pre-inspection questionnaire element checklist here. And this is like a flow list that you would want to use to basically go through all the major elements of the questionnaire, one through 14, and go through this series of questions and document this information to really streamline and more importantly accurately determine where you are in terms of your level of compliance. One thing not to forget about are the industry recommendations that you may or may not be doing. If you're not doing them, you got to have a good reason why you're not. Um, the CSUS Office of Water Programs, uh, a new book called Notes from the Field. We're going to show that later. Uh, books, available books from WEF, um, all these industry recommendations are definitely something that regulatory agencies look at as well, not just the regulation, to see what could have, should have been done, what the expectations are. Very important thing here you'd want to do, include with all these different elements in your analysis. And then ultimately, you can determine for yourself, are you in compliance? Yes or no. And if you're not, what action is needed specifically here in this column. So again, this is a quick, simple tool. Um, and uh, in future videos, we'll go through more details on how you do this. But this is something you can do yourself to get started. Another question for supervisors and managers, what things are you doing to help avoid violations of the WDRs? We have another module here we're going to introduce now to walk you through the best practices about reviewing available information in the SSO online library. I'm sure many of you already know, but we're going to give you a guided tour and walking you through inspection findings. You'll want to do this as a supervisor or manager to really help you stay on top. Like with enforcement, what violations look like. So you can use those as, as a tool to help you avoid violations and avoid having your agency get flagged and send a notice of violation or other enforcement actions. Let's, let's have a look at it. Just like earlier with enforcement, we're going to do the same thing with violations. Knowing what they look like is the best practice to avoiding them. So in this section, I'll teach you what they look like using publicly available documents so that you can tool your program to avoid violations. We're going to hop over here to the City of Inglewood's inspection notice of violation, just again to give a flavor for things to stay away from, and more importantly, to really give you a good sense of what the violations and findings can be uh, for some of the systems. Uh, and so I'm going to just run through a couple here. 
the city is not implementing the SSMP right here. D11. Uh, basically, inspectors learned that the uh, condition assessment happened here. Only 36% of the system had been looked at, uh, inspected wise. So, $24 million in capital improvement projects and condition assessments not touched in years and years and years. Just one example. Failed to imp implement the uh, SSMP uh, capacity program. Again, more information about the, uh, you know, all these great master plans, everything like that. None of the information in the master plan is being implemented. They also was in grease control. Uh, city basically uh, uh, confirming during the inspection that there was not really implementing targeted uh, things that are talked about in the SSMP in these areas, uh, major deficiency. Another one here, uh, the existing maintenance program for siphons, taking a look at the siphons on the inspection revealed significant fog, fog mats. Uh, failing to conduct the SSP audits. Uh, something that's always checked on every one of these are those two-year audits. Uh, number seven, uh, providing, if you haven't done so, watch out for this one, making sure your documents are publicly available or sent to the water boards. And that's in the uh, amended MRP 2013-0058-exec uh, as a requirement. Number eight, uh, the city failed to meet the two-hour notification for six individual uh, category one SSOs. Again, these are things, conduct factors, that can be, uh, you, you watch out for, and in the future, don't let these happen because these violations can accumulate and you keep on top of your certification for your spills. Another one here for the 15-day uh, requirement for a Category 1 spill uh, flagged in the inspection report. Other things worth noting, again, to keep uh, very, very aware of what the violations look like so you have a real good sense for what inspectors typically find some of these sites are the areas of concern. These are not violations. However, you don't want these either. Uh, a, these could lead to violations, and that's one reason that uh, they're they're flagged. But B, uh, you know, you want to make sure you're doing everything you can to avoid getting any kind of write-ups like these. Uh, you know, failure to really do much of the root control program. Again, not violations. Areas of concern that are flagged during the inspections. R records of sewer maintenance. Some problems. Uh, staffing and training problems. Again, uh, not really m uh, much being done. So that's just one example uh, of what these uh, violations look like. Again, the more you're familiar with what the violations look like and feel like, uh, the better off you're going to be for uh, uh, looking at your own system and really coming up with your own solutions to avoid these kind of things from happening. Another question, are you ready to showcase your program when inspectors arrive? We're going to help you get ready. In this next module, we're going to teach you, you know, supervisors and managers, pretty much what you need to know. And this has been um, constantly talked about in the public sector for many years, including myself when I was working for the water board. So we're going to culminate that for you today to really give you that one inspector's check, kind of what the post and findings, post inspection findings look like, including how you can use a pre-inspection questionnaire, etc. This will give you the tools you need ahead of time to know what to be ready for what information you'll need to produce for the inspection. Let's take a look. Okay, the last section is on getting ready for inspectors. There's a wealth of information that's been released by the water boards over the past 10 years, all about the different kind of tips to get ready for inspections, even from the US EPA for that matter, or an NGO. So I'm gonna walk you through some of the best practices of the available information right now for getting you ready before the inspectors arrive or even call. Okay, another best practice, uh, scrolling through the actual inspection report. Again, getting ready for an inspection, you know, it's, it's great you know the violations, kind of what those examples are, what's to stay away from and the areas of concern. Let's take a look at now what typically gets checked. What are the inspectors gonna ask about and uh, read the narratives, read, read the different parts of these inspections. They're really good to handle on the details about what items are being asked about and discussed, answers given, the visual inspection activities. Again, this is a great one because it's a, a very comprehensive one uh, that went all over the city. What types of assets were checked? Uh, what were some of the findings? Uh, what were some of the answers given? What kind of technology did they have in place to help them? Uh, all these different things here, and then even more importantly, these post-inspection findings, uh, what they came up with here, and then ultimately uh, what some of the answers were in the pre-inspection questionnaire by the city here to uh, you know, 
take note of uh, some of these that are in this in this questionnaire here. It's all included in the special report. So again, back on the SSO library, very helpful to spend a little bit of time. Again, if you're going to assess your own program yourself, go through and take a look at the actual inspection report documents so you can see the detail of the types of things you need to be ready for. Once again, back over on the SSO Reduction Library, I'm going to scroll down here to the pre-inspection uh, checklist mentioned earlier from the San Francisco Bay Regional Water Board. They've done a really nice job here laying out uh, typically what the inspection checklist includes. So again, you know, becoming familiar, walking yourself through this, putting yourself in their shoes, or even with EPA asking a lot of the same questions, put, put yourself in their shoes and, uh, and maybe even do some drills asking yourself uh, among with your staff all these questions answers for all these questions can you answer these are you happy with the answers uh, are there areas that you could improve running through you know your maintenance program your training all these different things uh, so again that's another thing to keep take a look at uh, there's not a lot here but there's quite a bit of information you're going to have to produce when the inspections happen and a lot of the boards have said publicly over the years it's not a matter of if it's when we come out for an inspection or do a phone call to start checking on what's going on. So again, these are some of the best practices and something highly recommended. Take a look at the checklist. It's available on the library and uh, it uh, definitely will get you ready for an inspection. Very pleased to present this last training module uh, with West Bay Sanitary District, Sergio Ramirez and Barso City, Cody Tompkins. They're gonna walk us through some of the top recommendations they have uh, about how to stay in compliance. In this module, we're going to hear from some of the top collection system managers about what they do and what they recommend to stay in compliance. So we're first going to hear from Sergio Ramirez, general manager over at the West Bay Sanitary District. Sergio has been around forever uh, in the Bay Area. He's, I think, over 25 years working in collection systems. He was around at the beginning of the WDRs when they were first adopted to start the Foster City uh, SSMP with some help kind of from scratch. So he's uh, he's been around and uh, he's going to talk about how the district uses the pre-inspection questionnaire and some other tips about how they audit their system every year to make sure they're staying on top of their compliance. Hi, my name is Sergio Ramirez. I'm the district manager here with West Bay Sanitary District. And I'd like to share our story with you today. Uh, about 10 years ago or so, we were... Uh, visited by a non-governmental organization. They actually filed a lawsuit uh, for excess SSOs, for sanitary mm -hmm. sewer overflows. But at the time, West Bay Sanitary District had approximately 42 SSOs per year. And mind you, this is a system that's uh, only 210 miles of pipe. So the lawsuit wasn't completely without merit. Mm -hmm. uh, but we quickly got to work. Uh, we invested heavily in revamping uh, our entire maintenance program. We invested in capital improvement. We invested in root foaming, smart covers. We invested heavily in training and certification of our staff, and we got to work. Wow. Within a year's time, we went from 42 SSOs down to 16 SSOs. Wow, that's impressive. The following year, it was 12. The year after that, it was 8. Before long, we were at four SSOs per year. Oh, this entire time, we documented all of our efforts in our SSMP. Our sewer system management plan was a living document, and it's continued to be a living document to this day. Every time we made a change in our system and our maintenance strategy or added something, deleted something, we would act, document this in our SSMP. So it really was a, a living management plan. And uh, what we've done uh, after that is we've evaluated that SSMP on an annual basis internally. I know that the state requires a two-year audit. However, we've chosen to look at our SSMP on a yearly basis. Fantastic. One of the tools that we use to um, review our SSMP is the pre-inspection questionnaire. We feel that the state's pre-inspection questionnaire is going to answer a lot of the questions that we may not have addressed in our SSMP. So we use those two items concurrently with one another. And um, 
The pre-inspection questionnaire is a great tool to use because it asks you about maintenance history, capital improvement, employee training. I mean, it is very thorough. And, mm -hmm. and if our SSMP is, is as thorough, I think we'll, you know, we'll, we'll be able to run a good system and stay in compliance. Next, we're going to hear from Cody Tompkins. Uh, he's the General Manager of Environmental Services, overseeing wastewater and solid waste for the city of Barstow. He's been very active with CWA. Uh, he's got a military training background. He's super involved in uh, collection systems. He's been the chief plant operator. He's got a grade five license. Uh, this guy's been around the block and uh, he was one of the best I've inspected when I was out there four or five years ago at the city. He was very instrumental along with his boss at the time to really go through the collection system and really explain what they're doing and more importantly, what they're working on. He's gonna talk about some of the tools that they use including the pre-inspection questionnaire and other tips uh, for managers. It's great to see you again. And you know, you were one of the top systems that I inspected when I was working for the water boards. And so we really thank you for helping out CWA today. And I'd just like to maybe ask you a couple of questions. Maybe you could start off with um, kind of how you use the pre-inspection questionnaire with your agency and how it's helped you. Yeah, so the, the, the pre-questionnaire, I think was an extremely valuable tool. As I, as I mentioned before, we, we hadn't had an inspection on our collection system uh, before, and so we were unaware of, of what, was, uh, what was essentially going to be asked and what, uh, what the expectations uh, of, the, of the water board. We know the regulation side, but, uh, mm -hmm. you know, um, we're not reading those regulations every single day. And so we wanted to just make sure that we were not fumbling around during the inspection and just being prepared. So um we we use that as a as a strong guideline uh in order to uh um you know get ready for the inspection so yeah it was uh it was an extremely valuable tool great is there anything else you could you want to offer other like cody do you have any other suggestions for other systems that may not be as uh you know top notch as yourself kind of where to you get know, started um the the couple things that i would recommend is one um you know a lot of agencies, um, unfortunately, are not financially uh, stable, and, and the city of Barstow has been in that situation years ago. Um, so doing an evaluation of your rate structure is important. Uh, understanding that, um, you know, it's a whole lot cheaper in the front end, right? Mm -hmm. um, sure. Being, being um, prepared and um, doing some of those proactive measures versus having a reactive standpoint, uh, it, it's just cheaper. Um, you're gonna pay me now or pay me later kind of thing. Um, so just having a, a strong um, awareness of your financial structure is important. And, uh, you know, if you have to go out for Prop 218 or ensure that you can meet compliance, uh, then, you know, it's it's an uphill battle and it, it's it's a struggle during these time frames, but it's, an, sure. it's extremely important. Um, understanding the regulation is important. Um, you know, having uh, qualified staff. Uh, I know a lot of agencies don't require certifications when it comes to collection, uh, collection system maintenance, um, but that's extremely important. Uh, ensuring that your staff is qualified and, and understand and have the ability to implement these regulation requirements. Um, and then, as I mentioned, being proactive. So one of the biggest things that helped us is just uh, ensuring um, uh, restaurants uh, specifically um, were properly uh, maintaining their grease interceptors. They're kind of the frontline uh, defense, and a lot of SSOs are, are uh, contributed to uh, grease. And so if, if you could just a little ounce of prevention up, up ahead, um, and ensuring that your code um, and your, uh, you know, your tools enable to um, appropriately manage businesses that have grease interceptors is extremely important as well. So um, we, have, uh, we have a pretty strong ordinance uh, in place to ensure that uh, those compliances and, and we make sure that we have a good working relationship uh, with those businesses and they understand what those requirements are. So that, all, that helped our SSO uh, levels drop uh, dramatically. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, That's good. Other than that, I can't think of anything off the top of my head anyways. 
How do you do your, uh, Cody, how do you do your own review of your SSMP and your SSMP audits? Um, do you have uh, a process matter, for that? Absolutely. As a matter of fact, we're, um, we're doing one right now. So um, uh, every, every year, um, the SSMP goes through um, an audit. And what happens is, is uh, we start at our um, lowest level staff um, so that they understand um, this tool and this mechanism. Um, because you know um, the frontline staff are the ones who are who are doing a lot of the work, and so we want to make sure that they they understand this document. Um, and sure. then uh, so it'll go through uh, those staff members, and then off to supervisors, and then we will uh, review um, the document as well, and then we meet as a department and just and make sure that uh, um, just there's no questions. You know, we want to make sure that the document is clean. Um, and then, uh, and then, uh, you know, that's uh, pretty cut and dry on our, on our review. Is that something you're presenting to your board also every year, or is it only when it's required? Uh, no, not every year is presented to the board. I think it's uh, every five years, I believe. Right. Every year, I might be getting one of the regulations mixed up a little bit there, but uh, yeah, that's good. That's yeah. great. Well, we really thank you for your time and on all your comments. Uh, it'll be helpful, especially for small systems. How many miles of pipe do you have? 113 miles. 113 miles. Okay. And what was your population again? Um, so the census, I think we're hovering around to uh, 23,000. 23,000. Okay. So you're a small to medium size. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So we're just barely over that threshold of, of, of small. Um, we are considered a, a severely disadvantaged community based on the median uh, Okay. Uh, household income, but uh, yeah, we're, we're right over the... There's a state. lot of them in the regulated under the sanitary sewer order, just like you. So it's, mm -hmm. you're, uh, you're leading the pack. Yes. Yeah. And, and and that's one of the things that, I mean, anybody can reach out to us. Uh, they don't have to recreate the wheel. Um, you know, we can, we can share uh, workable documents that, you know, somebody Perfect. can mold uh, to their organization. Um, because you know there are a lot of communities and systems that uh, may not have the, the financial backing to, to spend the money to have engineers write up things and, and do of that sure. nature. So um, we're always willing to, to help uh, sister agencies. Great, great to hear. We'll definitely pass it along and uh, this yeah. will be included in the recording here for Absolutely. CBA. So, okay, yeah. that's great. Okay, well, my last part of my presentation, I'm compelling you to take action. You know, use the modules here today to stay in compliance, do your homework, don't wait. Um, and the available resources and tools are amazing that are out there. Many of the ones on the left you've probably seen. The ones on the right you might not know about. Uh, this notes from the field, I just got a copy myself. It's a great resource uh, for supervisors and managers, so highly recommend that. And just to leave you with a few more things uh, and suggestions, um, as a former inspector with the water boards, inspecting well over 100 systems up and down the state, I can tell you that there's really so much more than what's here presented today that you'll need to know. So I'll run through a couple of those today uh, just to leave you with that you might want to review later. Um, reviewing the compliance expectations memo with the water boards. Um, do you have a COVID-19 uh, continuity plan? If you don't, are you documenting what's going on during the pandemic? You might need that information later. Mutual assistance agreements, that's definitely something uh, in the eyes of the regulator high up on the list. Your SSMPs, your SSB audits, have they been peer reviewed by anybody? That's a great thing to do. Ask another agency, another expert. Um, have you reviewed the WDRs, uh, maybe at least annually with your staff? A really good tip. Um, how do your spill reports look? Sam's gonna really get into a lot more of that later. How are your engineering and operations collaborating? Again, this goes on and on. Um, one of the last things to leave you with, if you tested your assets, like your pump stations, um, we continually see if you look at the data, um, alarms not working. Have you, been, have you been through the drill? The alarm's gonna work when the PLC or when the, um, the UPS fails. Those are the kind of things I wanna leave you with today. So really hoping that uh, you'll use the training, help yourself and stay in compliance. Thanks for watching.